Ali? Mm-hmm. Um, Ali. Ali. Um, are you guys able to send pink noise to each of the Atmos speakers? REW only sends 7.1 signal. Well, Uh-oh. well, I mean, there is something that yeah. will allow you to do so. So, yeah. What is that, Chana? I'm you guys... pulling it up on screen. Where did it go? Mm-hmm. There know. it is. Boom. This is what you need, Ali. This is uh, the world's first Dolby Atmos calibration disc. It's made by uh, yours truly and the guy upstairs, Joe. Me and Joe, Joe and I made this for this simple fact. Yeah. Joe said, hey, man, I know you got this Atmos thing. Can you make me some pink noise and we can throw it all around the room? So this will, no matter uh, from 512 to 916, we can put pink noise in every channel. We got sweeps in every channel. Impulse response in every channel. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was an issue that I was having because when I was doing calibration for people, I would have to have them switch out the speakers, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, plug it into the plug the heights into where the ear level ones are, and then I'm able to access them with HDMI using REW. But it was a hassle. And a lot of times they wouldn't put it back in the right place, and it was just it took way more time. And I said, man... I wish I could access the high channels. Now, um, yeah, now we can do that. So that's uh, a lot of people are excited about this and been selling pretty well. Uh, the I've heard somebody also say, well, can't you just use the pink noise that's coming from the AVR? M- maybe, maybe for like level matching. The problem is sometimes that pink noise is not anything particular. You know, ours is specific yeah. to... Um, you know, there's a certain frequency range for the main speakers and a certain frequency range for the bass, and that's what we use as a standard for level matching because it can it can vary. You know, if you make mm-hmm. that uh, range different, you may level match a little bit different differently, right? Yeah. So, so. Uh, I don't know. I think it depends on the AVR. Maybe there are some AVRs that are putting out some good pink noise when you're doing the level calibration because the AVR can access all the channels. But uh, I can say that I don't think that what's coming out of the Denon and Marantz is what I would use for level matching. And I've right. tried it. You know, I've tried so, using the noise that comes from there. It's not. It's he's got, he's got a follow up question. Is yeah. there a tutorial to do this since REW needs to connect to the receiver? Like, how do you measure when the pink noise is played through the disc? Yeah, well, you can you can always measure in REW. REW has a generator where it puts out the sound and then, you know, I guess what you're saying is how do you do a sweep, right? So we do have uh, sweeps that where you can record the sweep and you can actually import the WAV file into REW. And it's as if you took the measurement using the generated sound from REW. So you can do it that way. You don't even have to have REW here. If you were able to record using a calibrated mic, record on the computer and, Come back to your uh, main computer with a bunch of recordings, and you can import those. So yeah, yeah. Um, the pink noise out of AVR is without the Atmos decoder. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. All right, yeah, that makes sense because they're just accessing each channel. Channel, yeah. But the the problem is just that you don't know what kind of noise that they're generating from that. Right, and it's different with every AVR. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it totally is. Uh, scruff. Scruff King Man. Um, it's a Blu-ray, so you would need a Blu-ray player. Right. We have the digital version available. So if you have like Plex, Shield Plex, you know, mm-hmm. that'll that'll work it too. Uh right now with the pre-order is a hundred dollars. You pre-order the disc, you get the digital files, and we just did a huge update uh, uh at the beginning of the month. So um pre-orders pre-order is going till January 30th, spatialcd.com. Get it before need- the price goes up. Do I need the disc if I already have Dirac Live? You don't need anything. You don't need yeah. this disc. There's nobody who needs any. You know, I'm not one to oversell anything, including my own stuff. You don't. There's definitely no need. There's no need for a home theater. There's no need for any of this stuff. Yeah, you don't Do need any. Do you want it? That depends. Do you want to check to see what Dirac Live did? Do you like to manually tune stuff? You know, I think it's useful to double check just to make sure that you know maybe Dirac Live uh, Dirac Live did a great job, but like China, maybe something got disconnected and it's yeah. a good way to just kind of check things, make sure 
that things are set up properly. You, Chana, you gave an example last time where the subwoofer itself I, yeah. had a setting that was weird, and you, mm-hmm. you know, Direct did its thing. It can't control that, but yeah. you were able to say, "Hey, that sub is not set wrong. Up properly." Yeah. yeah. Cause I went through the um, speaker, the crossover points and I was just like, something's weird. And then that's, that's when I was just like, Oh crap. I didn't set up my subwoofer properly. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's like, hold on now, Joe, no need for home theater. Well, yeah, there's no need. And you know what? Life is not all about needs, right? It, how fun would life be? If it was all needs, right? Sometimes I mean, I wants it. are fun. So yeah. let's talk about the wants and just call it what it is. It's a want. Yeah. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I want I want a Porsche. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, all right, everybody. We do the Daily Hi-Fi podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you join up to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily hi-fi. And we will see you there for the big show every Monday. Yeah.